Welcome everyone. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to create this uh, energy shield that absorbs projectiles and how to set it up to activate and deactivate like this and deactivate. All right, let's get started. Oh, well, first, let me show you the static mesh that's, uh, that I'll be using. Uh, let me go to my static mesh folder, and here it is. So I've already created this very basic mesh uh, and added this uh, this material to it. Uh, again, really basic. I'm not going to go over creating the mesh and the material in this tutorial. Just uh, this is mainly about how to use the shields, and uh, any mesh uh, will work. Um, so yeah, this is what I'll be using. So let's go ahead and uh, create our shield blueprint. So uh, let me create it here. Uh, blueprint class actor, let's call it BP underscore uh, energy shield. All right, uh, let me dock it here. Now the first thing we want to add to this is our static mesh. And I'll call this the shield mesh. Uh, let's select our energy shield from here. Great. Now we have our mesh here in uh, in this uh, blueprint. And the next thing we want to do is uh, create a collision uh, box. So this shield will basically absorb any projectile that's thrown at it. So we need to create a box collision. Uh, let's call this uh, absorb area. And basically anything that passes through this area will be absorbed. Now let's... Um, let me make it a bit like this bigger yeah I want it to be a bit in front of the shield so that it absorbs anything before it actually hits it um, all right and on the front looks good all right so this is basically our absorption area anything that passes through here will be uh, absorbed all right so now the first thing we want to do is uh, what happens when the mesh overlaps, sorry, this absorption area overlaps with something. So we're gonna click on the absorb area, go down here to on begin overlap, and this will be called when anything enters uh, or overlaps with the uh, collision box that we set up. So the other actor here uh, is what's being collided to, so I'm going to cast it to my arrow projectile. So I have this uh, arrow projectile class, and I want this to basically um, uh, destroy this actor if it collides with it. But just as a safety, um, I have a function also called disable damage. I'll call this one first before destroying it. Uh, and this will ensure that if destroy takes some time, then the damage will be disabled while that happens. Uh, all right. Now, that's actually mainly it for um, absorbing the actual damage. So let's, let's test this out. So I'm going to go here to my test area, put in my shield. Looks good. Let's make it a bit bigger. All right. And uh, so this is my arrow. As you can see, it hits stuff. Now, if I shoot it here, well, it gets absorbed. Nice. Working as expected. Um, now, there's a few things that we want to do uh, to make it actually visually look like we're absorbing the arrow. So we need some visual feedback to uh, the player. Uh, for this, um, I'm going to create a pulse effect. So let's create a custom event here, call it pulse, let's just call it pulse. So what this will do is that um, it will take the shield and it will um, make it flash. Now the way it'll do that is so this uh, material that I'm using here has something called power. Uh, if I decrease this power, you'll see that it becomes a lot brighter. 
Um, so I'm just gonna do that. Um, I'm going to edit this power variable dynamically for the material. Now to do that, we actually have to create a uh, dynamic material instance. And I'm gonna do that in the construction script. So I'm gonna get my shield mesh here. I'm going to say create dynamic material instance. Uh, we're going to use our, how is it called? Healing, yeah, healing shield. And I'm gonna promote that to a variable. Uh, I'm gonna call this uh, shield material. All right, um, so now I can actually edit this shield material and it will reflect uh, in real time. Now in my event graph, what I want to do is um, after something gets uh, absorbed, uh, I want to call this pulse function. Right now it doesn't do anything, so let's get our shield material and say, um, what was it, uh, something about, uh, uh, set scalar parameter value yeah so the parameter value I want to edit his name is power so once this happens I want to set it to I don't know something like 0 0.1 and then after a certain amount of time let's say one second uh, we want to set it back to its original value of seven. Now you can use this, you can get this as a variable from the construction uh, script, but uh, yeah, right now I'm just going to hard code it. Uh, let's see what this looks like. So when I f shoot it with an arrow, flashes for a second and then goes back. Right. But obviously very choppy, it happens suddenly. Uh, we want this to be a smooth transition. Uh, so to do that, we can use, uh, let me get rid of this, uh, we can use a timeline. So I'm going to say add timeline. We'll call this the pulse timeline. Uh, and basically, if you don't know uh, what a timeline does, let me double click it, it's gonna open here. What a timeline does is it allows you to edit, um, uh, uh, well, to follow two uh, values from a certain number to a certain number over time. So we created the float track, let's call this the um, uh, power alpha. Uh, I'm gonna use alpha because I'm gonna use this as a value from zero to one. Uh, you're gonna see what I mean in a second. So at zero, it's gonna start with zero. At one, it's gonna start with one. Um, so this means that at a length of one second, it's going to start at zero and it's going to gradually go to one for one second. Uh, and how you can use this is that now we have this alpha here, so we can do a lerp node, linear interpolates, and plug in our alpha here. Uh, it's going to go from our initial value of seven to our new value of 0.1. And for those who don't know, lerp uh, just takes a value between zero and one, and uh, if it's zero, it uses A, if it's one, it uses B, and anything in the middle uses something in the middle. And we're gonna plug this here to our value. Call this on update. Um, so what this will do is that it will only go from seven to 0 0.1 in a duration of one second, but it will not go back. Let me show you what I mean. So pulse, you can see that it gradually goes to this new value. Mm -hmm but it doesn't go back. We want it to actually go back to uh, seven when it's done. So what we can do is instead of having it, let's say we can go from uh, at 0 0.5, it goes to one and add a new one. At one, it goes back to zero. So it's going to start at zero, go to one, start, uh, end at uh, zero again. Now we can smooth these by selecting them all, right click, uh, right clicking on them and say auto. So make it smoother. Uh, and actually, I'm gonna edit this a bit so that, oh, sorry. I'm gonna edit this one a bit, make it go to one a bit faster. So at 0.2, it goes to one and then gradually decreases. Uh, you can play around with these value. Let's see how this one looks. Nice, okay. I like that. All right, great. Um, so that's our pulse effect. Uh, one other thing we can do is uh, add a sound when uh, we actually absorb something. So we can say uh, play sound at location. Um, I think I already have a sound uh, for this. 
Uh, all right, so yeah, so I have a sound asset for this. It's already called uh, absorb. Um, sounds like this. Uh, and you can use, of course, any sound you like. Uh, and the location will just be get actor location. Great. So now we pulse, we play uh, the sound, and great. Now, uh, we're going to be giving this shield to an enemy. So an enemy needs a way to, um, say, activate and deactivate the shield. So I'm going to also create two um, custom events here for activation and deactivation. Uh, let's go add custom event, activate, and deactivate. All right. Now, basically, what the activate is going to do, it's going to be very simple. Um, it's going to get our um, absorption area here and disable collision. So set collision enabled to no collision. Oh, sorry, that's the deactivate. Uh, it just disables collision. So. Um, it won't be absorbing anything. Uh, and the activate will do the opposite, uh, which will be set collision to um, query, uh, sorry, query only, no physics. Yep. Uh, so let me move these here. So if I call deactivate now uh, on begin, it is no longer absorbing anything. It's deactivated. So it's uh, the arrows are hitting it like they do any other mesh. Uh, but of course, we want also the shield itself. I'm going to remove this. We want the shield uh, mesh itself to shrink or disappear or something when uh, we do this. Uh, I'm going to make it shrink. Uh, to do that, uh, we can get our shield mesh and set its uh, scale. I'm going to set uh, relative scale. And we can just set the scale to 0. Uh -huh. So again, what this will do, and let me call deactivate again. Oh, all right, let's actually put a delay of 2 seconds. Yeah, 2.2, that's fine and call deactivate. So 2.2 seconds and boom, it's just gone. Now we want this to be a gradual like zooming, uh, like shrinking effect. So to do that, we're going to use a timeline as well. Uh, I'm going to create a separate event for this custom event, call it uh, um, uh, shrink shield. And what this will do, let's say add timeline, call this the shrink timeline, double click it. Uh, let's say it shrinks in 0.75 seconds. Add a float track, call it uh, scale, because we're going to be editing the scale. Uh, at zero, we're going to be at zero, and at one, we're going to be one. Oh, actually, we want the opposite because we're shrinking. So I want in the beginning to be one, and the end to be zero. So at zero, we want the value one. At one, we want the value to be zero. Oh, and sorry again, this is not one. This should match the length here, so 0 0.75. Great. Uh, again, to be smooth, we can select these and say auto. Now it's a bit smoother, this uh, curve. Um, so when we call shrink shield, uh, we want to get our shield mesh and update its scale value. Uh, this will automatically convert from float to vector, which will be all the same values. All right. So now uh, when we deactivate, we want to also call shrink. Whoop. We want to call shrink shield. All right, and let's see what this uh, looks like. Whoop, yeah, there's a shrink. Great. Um, now, there's something else that we need uh, on activate. We need the expand. 
So to create an expand function, it's really easy. Uh, I'm gonna reuse everything the same. So expand shield here. And the only difference is we're going to plug it to reverse from end. And on activate, let's call expand shield. Great, so now let's do another delay um, of two seconds and call activate. And let's see what this looks like. Shrink, two seconds and expand, lovely. All right, so now, uh, let me remove all this. So now our um, energy shield is pretty much ready. Uh, now let me show you how you can add it to any um, enemy character or any basically static uh, skeletal mesh. Uh, let me open my content drawer. Uh, third person, blueprints, enemies. I will be adding it to this enemy right here. Uh, now let's go to his skeletal mesh. Great. Now, the first thing you want to do is actually check um, the animation that uh, will be playing once this character is holding the shield. So I'm going to use specific animation. Mine is called shield loop. Yeah. So it's this animation. Um, and I want the shield to be somewhere around here. Yeah, just in front of his uh, right arm. So I think... Um, the bone, what you, you want to do is select the bone that is corresponding to this. Uh, mine is called wrist plate R right here. Oh. Uh, and you want to add a, a socket uh, under this bone. And give a name to the socket. I'm going to call it energy shield socket. Great. So uh, let's look for our socket. So now you can add, uh, right click and add preview assets. This is going to be our energy shield. And just note that this is just a preview. This actually doesn't edit the mesh itself. It just shows you what it would look like. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to add this preview mesh and actually edit our socket so that it uh, fits well. Now you can do transformations on this uh, on this socket and they will be saved. So let me uh, do this. All right, um, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna keep it like that. Uh, now this uh, is going to be the socket itself. You can right click and remove uh, uh, all attached assets. We don't really need that. All we need is the transform of the socket saved. Let me save all. Now, let's go back, I'm gonna close this. Let's go back to our uh, enemy blueprint. So this is a blueprint of the uh, enemy character that I want to add this uh, shield uh, that we just created to. Um, but the first thing is, um, he needs to have uh, a way to access the shield. So I'm going to go under the mesh and add it as a child actor. So there are lots of different ways where you can attach this mesh to um, uh, the uh, uh, this uh, actor to the mesh, but um, I want to do it in the uh, actual components uh, panel so that I can see it in the viewport. I'm going to call this the energy shield and over here, select our blueprint energy shield. Great. Oh, and we need to socket it to our socket that we just created, energy socket. Now, as you can see, uh, the actual character isn't standing in the pose that we expect, so you don't see it. So let me use uh, our shield loop. Great, so this is what it would actually look like in game. Um, but uh, we don't want to, of course, uh, have him always carrying the shield. This enemy is going to have two states, either holding the shield or holding the weapon. So the first thing we need to do is see which state we're in. To do that, I'm going to add a variable called uh, isShieldActive. 
Uh, great. Now, this is shield active. Let's uh, compile and save. Uh, what we want to do is in the animation blueprint, so I'm going to open the animation blueprint of this enemy. Um, it, we have a very basic uh, animation uh, animograph here. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, it just has a weapon locomotion state, a dashing state, and a dead state. Now we want to add a new state, uh, which is holding a shield. So I'm going to uh, go here, say add state. We'll call this shield locomotion. And uh, I already have a blend space uh, for this character holding the shield. Uh, a blend space is just a blend between different animations, and this is uh, this all came with uh, this mesh that I got from the Unreal Asset Store. This is a Paragon uh, free asset. Uh, I'm not going to go over how to create the blend space here, but uh, uh, if you have your own animations, feel free to use that, of course. Um, I'm just going to plug this out here, and I already have a direction and speed variable. Again, I'm not going to go over how to set these up. Uh, there are tons of different tutorials uh, out there for that. Um, so now we set up our shield locomotion state. Uh, we want to set transitions uh, from our weapon locomotion to our shield locomotion. To do that, uh, when is shield active, we want to go to shield locomotion. And is shield not active, we want to go back. Uh, so first, I'm going to go to my event graph here, uh, which is uh, uh, on the uh, update animation blueprint. Oh, sorry, I need to let my cat out. Yep. <coughs> uh, here we want to add a uh, the variable that we just created. Oh, by the way, here I'm casting to my Feng Mao enemy uh, uh, blueprint, so I have access to is shield active that we just created here. Uh, I'm going to take this and promote it to a variable with the same name is shield active and plug it in here. Uh, compile and save. And now in the transition from weapon locomotion to shield locomotion, I'm just going to check if is shield is active. And the transition back is going to be the opposite of that. So is shield not active. Compile and save. So now if we go back to our enemy blueprint, we can toggle between the shield state and the weapon state. Shield state and weapon state. All right, now let's see uh, Let's see what this uh, looks like. So I'm going to go here. Uh, let me delete this. I'm going to pop my enemy in here. And I'm going to start shooting him. Great, he is absorbing. Uh, he's running at me. Great. Now, oh, one, th one thing I want to show you. So you see here before he attacks me, he still has the shield in his hand. Um, obviously, we don't want that. Uh, we want him before, to, before he attacks to uh, deactivate the shield. And once he's done, to activate it again. Um, now, the way we're going to do that, uh, let me close this, uh, is we're going to um, add an activate and deactivate shield function in my enemy's uh, event graph here. So I have a basic melee attack, a dash attack, and um, yeah, that's about it. So I'm going to add an activate, I'm going to add an activate and deactivate shield here. Um, all right, so I'm going to add a custom event, activate shield, let me zoom in a bit, and another custom event for deactivate shield. Now, we start with the shield active, so let me start by creating the deactivate function. So the deactivate, uh, basically what it's going to do is uh, get our um, energy shield, and we can't call deactivate right here uh, because um, uh, this, uh, sorry, this is uh, from actor component. This is not our own deactivate on the energy shield. Uh, but here we need to cast to our uh, energy shield blueprint. So first we need to get the child actor. So get child actor and then cast to BP energy shield. 
Uh, I'm actually going to copy this into the construction script so that I don't have to do it every time and promote this to a variable, call it energy shield actor. Oh, I already had that before. Let me delete that. All right. So now we have our energy shield actor, compile and save. Now I can get this uh, energy shield actor and now call deactivate on it. And similarly here, we're going to call activate. Now, when we do our melee attack, uh, this is here our, on our event begin attack, before we do the melee attack, we want to call uh, deactivate shield and then do our attack. Obviously, we want to wait for the duration of the activate shield, uh, let's say one second, and then do our melee attack. Uh, but this is going to look very strange. Let me show you why. Start playing again. Come over here. Hello, he sees me. And then look at that. The shield just deactivated magically on its own. And we didn't activate it again. We're going to fix that. Uh, but we want the enemy to do an animation when they deactivate it. Uh, luckily, I already have an animation for that. Uh, activate shield, I called it. Uh, what is it? Montage Feng Mao uh, Shield Activate. Yeah. So this is the uh, animation I have. I created a montage out of it. And in montages, you can add something called the montage notify, uh, which is basically an event that's triggered at a specific point in the animation. So here, right as his arm is about to do this, I trigger uh, and notify with the name activate. And let me show you how I can use that. So before we deactivate the shield here, we want to call play oh, play montage. No, not this one. Play this one. Play montage in this skeletal mesh. And the montage you want to play is activate shield activate. Yeah. Um, now on notif so here is the notif notify that I was talking about. So I can switch on this. And on notify begin, let me remove default. I'm going to add activate as one of the switch parameters. So when activate is called, then we want to actually call the deactivate. Uh, so basically what this does is plays the montage. When it reaches the specific point, it calls deactivate. Now let's see what this looks like. Hello. Much better. And now we need to call activate again. Uh, so once we're done with the melee attack, so melee attack here, we have an attack end call activate shield. Uh, but we want to do the same for activate shield. Also play the same montage. Uh, let me move this down a bit and um, yeah, play the same montage. Actually, everything is going to be the same as well. We need the same notify. So on notify begin, instead of calling, oh, sorry, instead of calling uh, activate, oh, where did I go? We now call deactivate. Now let's test it out. Hello, absorbing my arrows. He sees me. Oh, attacks. And oh, something went wrong here. Oh, I called deactivate. Sorry, here we want to call activate. All right. Hello. Come at me. Deactivate, hits me, activates shield again. Beautiful. Thank you for watching. If you've uh, stuck around for this long, please uh, consider uh, giving me a like and a subscribe. I'm gonna, this is my first ever tutorial that I've made. Uh, I'm gonna try to make others uh, hopefully get me motivated to keep working on my own game. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, 
Uh, there's a lot of mechanics in there, there's lots of uh, enemies, but uh, again, this is my first ever project and I'm uh, still learning. Um, so these tutorials, I think, really will help me out. And if you want to stay tuned and uh, see more of this, uh, please let me know and leave it in the comments below. Thank you.